Bob Coleman, it's the bear. I've seen this asked many, many times. I'm interested in model building. What is the very first kit I should start with? And there's a multitude of answers. Most of them are uh, overly complex for somebody who's never built a model before. You know, they say an Airfix airplane, a Tamiya, uh, 148 scale, blah, 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 blah. Wrong, 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 wrong. I'm gonna tell you exactly, if you are interested in trying a model build, this is the kit you should get. A submarine, okay, it doesn't matter which make it is, but just a submarine kit. Um, this one I've got here is uh, from Zvezda. It's the K141 Kursk Rossiski Atomny Podvodny Raketny Cruiser. Russian nuclear submarine Kursk, of course, the infamous Kursk. But why would this kit be suitable? Well, here's your answer. 44 parts. That's your answer straight away. And uh, let's open her up and uh, look inside the box. And I'm going to give you some other answers as well. Why not an airplane? Airplane, masking, complex, have to build a cockpit, have to paint the cockpit, then you need to glue together, all transparencies, tricky. Why not a tank? Tank, tracks, big nightmare for people starting building. This is your answer right here. If you just want to, you know, try sticking some plastic together, you won't go wrong with this. And this cheap, this kit is cheap anyways as well. And I tell you what, I think this will be kind of impressive as well. So we've got basically two really big bits that get glued together. And right there, that's your submarine. It can't be that difficult, can it? So uh, let's build her on up. Actually, I'll just show you the parts as well. Here's the detailed parts. Some of these are optional as well. So you've got like, if you want to show the rocket tubes, um, here's the doors for them. This is the, I don't know what you call it, the um, bridge, yeah, the bridge, the bit that goes on top of the submarine. There's a few parts there. You've even got a little stand there with Kursk in Russian so you can display it. So you've got a display stand. It's, um, it's so simple. There's the propellers. There's the other part of the bridge. And I think that's part of the display stand. So even out of those 44 parts, some of them are just display parts. And you've got a little transparency here, that's the bridge windows. And you've got a very, very modest amount of decals as well. So really, you can't go wrong. I'm going to show you the instructions. And uh, there you go. Basically, glue the top to the bottom, glue the doors on, whichever way you want to do it. Build up the bridge. Put the bridge here. You've got two versions, you can have all the periscopes and bits and pieces either, uh, I don't know what you call it, deployed or covered up. And then stick on some wingy parts, put on the propellers, build the stand, ta-da! And to make it even more simple, only four colours are required. Black, aluminium, brass and gunmetal. And I suppose those will be optional. So this is my recommendations for a true beginner. You want to build your very first kit, why not try a submarine? Which is what we're going to do now. And I expect this only to take a couple of minutes to build. Well, okay, maybe about an hour or so. But let's get on with it. So it's your very first kit, where do you start? The first thing I recommend is having some tools, yeah? Now, if it is your very first kit, you may not want to buy these more expensive Tamiya type um, sprue cutters, but there are the cheaper ones that you know you can get them on eBay, uh, Amazon, and all that, and they aren't that expensive. Um, I use these files, but why not just get some of your wife or girlfriend's nail files? They'll do the job, or some sandpaper, because you just need. A, I'm going to show you that bit um, in a second. A hobby knife or a 
yeah, you do need a hobby knife really because they are safer, okay, just to use for this purpose. And even that's a bit optional. You can probably get away with just either using your um, sprue cutters to try and level down the, the, the um, sprue burrs and then sanding, or you can use the, the detail knife to pair away uh, the extra plastic. Um, so that's optional really, you don't need much. The most important thing is glue, okay, and um, there's so many different types. We're using this to my extra thin, it just is just such a great, easy to use glue. And I'm going to show you why as well. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to explain is dry fitting, which incredibly is not understood by uh, people who do YouTube uh, modeling videos. They seem to have a point of criticizing a lot of model kits, saying they don't fit, etc, etc. But um, all you're doing is, like it sounds, just basically trial fitting the parts together to see how they join up and you can see here see at the front here there's like this sort of might be a small issue here do you need to compress it you might need to work on that but you and in some cases uh, you might need to file down some parts some of these burrs here need to be filed down smooth in order that you get a, uh, a good fit. So either take your knife or your sprue cutters, pair them all off and what I do is I take the sanding stick and I run it down the mating surfaces of the plastic and that just, the only reason to do that is that you roughen up the texture a little bit, you make sure it's clear of any, any uh, obstructions and do it to both sides and also it gives a bit of a bite to the cement as well. You can see here here's one of these uh, sprue burrs here we have to knock them off all we need to do is pair it off like so get your file and just give it a quick swipe. doesn't need to be 100% at the moment we'll do all that stuff later on there's some more sprue burrs here take care of them And there's a load here at the back as well. Depending on which kit you've got, uh, depend if you had to trim this out from a sprue tree, but we'll come up to that later on. I'll show you how you take them out of the sprue tree. Just give this a bit of a quick swipe. You can check your instructions. This here. This part of the back is actually a sprue gate, and that can get trimmed off right away, right now. So take that off. Now, the other thing that might come in handy, and I should have mentioned it before, is some tape to sort of hold these parts together while we glue them in. Because they are, they are sort of slightly, because they're quite big moldings. They're sort of bowing out a little bit, but that's pretty easy to solve. I'm just going to show you how to do that and just uh, come back to you in a second. Okay, just using whatever tape you have. Well, actually, I'll caveat that. You don't want to get anything that leaves a sticky residue. So I'm using this, uh, I think it's like masking tape for curves anyways. You can masking tape, painter's tape, that sort of thing. Electrician's tape will do it. But what we're doing, we're going to hold this together temporarily. Uh, because it does bow out a little bit and I'll show you how we apply the glue so if we hold that nice and tight wrap that around now these parts are pretty much locked together and we'll do another one here there we go so now we are really dry fitted you can see how much it bows out here so we're not going to start at that point instead we're going to work successively, so we're not going to glue the whole thing in one go. We're just going to glue one section at a time. It's really the best way to do it is to have some patience with this. So what we do, we get the extra um, thin cement, liquid cement, and all we need to do is just let it capillary down the joints. The 
it's kind of funny, but once we join these parts together, I suppose most of the build is complete. There we go. You can use uh, any glue you want, even the other. This thin cement has got a massive advantage in that you can hold the parts together while you construct the kit. So the other glues, like the sticky glues that you might be able to remember that came with the Airfix kits, that stuff you had to apply on the parts and then group them together. But this method of construction uh, basically eases a lot of the pain. So it really makes it easy. Just keep on wicking this through here. And all we're gonna do is let this set and I don't mean a couple of minutes I mean a couple of hours because when this sets and we'll press it home as well to make sure we've got a nice firm joint there we're gonna to have to put stress on these points so this will be joined but we need to apply more temporary bonding and hold those parts in stress while they join but really this is not difficult if this is your very first kit the big one I'm going to give you is take your time enjoy it and don't ask loads and loads of questions on the internet because 90% of the time you can get people trying to be helpful that just give you poor advice really I mean uh, the way to learn is by mistakes, it really is. That's the way you learn. You know, I've got, you know, 15 or 16 years modeling experience behind me. But if this is your very, very first build, you haven't got that experience behind you. So you need to build it up. And it doesn't take that long. So let's just leave that for now, leave that for a couple of hours, let that all go off, and then we can come back to it. Let me show you how you remove parts from the sprue tree, as they call it. So what you do, you take your, your side cutters. One end, is one side is flat, and the other side isn't. And what you do is use the flat side and place it up against the side of the part that you're cutting away from the sprue, like so, then just cut. If you do it the other way, you'll leave too much of a burr and also you can put some stress onto the piece and cause it to bruise. <laughs> bruise plastic, yeah, I know. Okay, so just work these off, separate it off the tree. And then the second thing you do, have a look at the part, see if there's any more. There's actually little burrs on the inside here as well. So we can, to quicken things up, take your cutters, again, flat side down, Place it against these and just snip them out. The next thing we need to do is to tidy them up a little bit further because we can't have those sort of protrusions there. Just get your sanding stick. And just make sure that they go flush. And then again, what we're going to do with this part is, this is the, you've got an option on this kit. You can display the missile um, doors open or closed. It is up to you. But um, we're going for closed. Um, just the way I want to build it. So what we need to do, just check your instructions as well, which I'm not doing, is 2B2 and 1B2. I don't know how this goes on. Let's just check how this fits. I think it goes on like so. And then we've got another part that goes around there. So we need to check the fits. So I'll, I'll trim that other part off and see how that fits as well. Okay, so back to dry fitting for these parts. I've got the other part, the lower part of the door. That goes on like so. And the fit is really good actually. It's fine. And then the second part of the doors goes on like this. And actually you can see that the the fit is absolutely fantastic. So we can go straight away 
and we can glue these parts both at the same time. Again just letting the cement just flow down these gaps. Once we've got it in position, once there's a bit of glue down we just exert the minimum amount of pressure to make sure that it fits home, so to say. a little bit of readjustment required just to make sure that this area is flush that's all you need to do big model kit actually this uh, sub Check with your thumbnail, sort of rub it down the joint, make sure everything is flush. The fit is excellent, really is. No problems at all. All we need to do is repeat that for the other doors. We aren't doing it posed open, there's no point, there's no detail. There's only this, this is the only detail. There's no point looking at that, okay? So uh, let's fit the other doors. Okay, I've actually got a good example of dry fitting for once. So, despite the other doors fitting perfectly fine, this one doesn't. It doesn't actually fit inside there. And uh, believe it or not, not many people know this, or some people surprisingly don't. All you need to do is take your sanding stick and just sand down a little bit from each side until it fits. And look at that, a perfect joint once again. So, uh, let's just continue with that. Okay, all this glue is set here so we can remove the tape. But keep it. Oh, the other thing, I did run a bit of uh, cement down here uh, off camera, so it has already. I've already got some of it sealed up. Uh, there we go. That's off. Take off your masking tape as soon as possible, so you don't want to have the risk of uh, any contaminants on there. So we still need to glue this bit and this bit. You see this bit still spread apart there? You're gonna have to use some clamps there, or we can just hold it on with our fingers, which is what we're gonna do actually. We're just gonna hold it on our fingers for quite a while. We're gonna run cement down there. Because that's where we're gonna get good purchase. And on the other side of the I suppose they're called fins, aren't they? They must be called fins. Tail planes? I don't know. So what we'll do, we'll just clamp this together with our hands. And that'll, because it's quick set cement, yeah, it won't take that long to set. Maybe about five minutes, just hold it like so. Just pretending you haven't got any clamps, okay? We've got the front to do. Look, it's got a little mouth. Hello, modelers. Please subscribe to the bear. Okay, right. Just do that again. All we do is use pressure. So let's run the cement down the gap and use a slightly different method. That's one side. Keep the pressure on all the time. And now with the cement already on there, we'll take some tape and just hold it firm while the glue sets, so a little bit different than how we did it the first time around. And then just make sure everything's pressed together. Just hold it like that. I'll give it a good hold for a couple of minutes just to make give it a good chance to purchase. That really helps out with your construction. Okay, I've just held this in place. I've just added a bit more glue at the back to get that bit set. I've only got I need to do these propeller shafts. They are sort of, they were a bit warped. That was the problem. So just do one at a time. Get the glue in the gap quite a lot. And then again, just apply pressure. And it's as simple as that. 
just keep it held there just be patient that's the first thing you gotta learn as a modeler okay we may as well do the conning towel waiting for that to dry okay multiple con components here shown in one step um, big tip here is break down that big step into smaller ones okay so instead of just trying to jumble it all together um, the easiest way to do it is just join two parts at a time so what we do again dry fit the parts and we'll start off with the sides these have got pins to, alloc to um, align them together then just glue them together against the against the, the joins there against the seams and some more down here put a little bit in that pin and then what you do is just wait for that to set before we do the other parts simple as that really and actually with that because we're using the fast glue this stuff sets real quick so just use a bit of pressure and then I think the next bit we'll do is the underneathy bit yeah and that can just slips underneath like so There you go. And then you move that part. So now this is a pretty solid, solid piece. You can actually see it doesn't fit that great. See at the front, there's a big gap there. Don't worry about it. Oh, this does is going to line the top now. There's a clear part that goes here for the windows. Um, two options there. And because this is our very, very first kit ever, we've never built a kit before, we're not even doing any masking. We're just gonna we're just gonna build this kit and enjoy it for what it is. So I just want to just check again the dry fit, which is okay, basically. I think I need to do a bit of a sand there. I can see a seam there, so I need to take that off that's better already but let's get the clear part out and just glue it straight in okay so we're going to do a subcomponent so just trim it the clear part then you want to check it must only go in one way and then again what you do dry fit and it fits perfectly fine and just apply a modest amount of cement. Simple as that, my friends. Like I said, no masking. This is a very, very first kit. Let's just check the fit again onto here. It sort of seems to want to jump out a little bit, and I wonder if that's because this part is a little bit bent, not too sure. Look at that. Back to the hole now. This has all had a good chance to dry. So take this off. And, uh, okay, it's your very first kit. This is entirely optional. You have got a big step there, yeah? And if you want to get rid of that, it's just a case of sanding it down. So we're going to do a little bit of that because it's pretty easy to do. You know what I mean? This stuff is easy to do. So I just want to get rid of a bit of that step. And because this is your first build, we ain't going to do any, any uh, potty or anything like that. I might do that, okay? But you guys don't. It's your very first build. Let's not complicate things. Just enjoy the process of sticking plastic to plastic. That's all you're here for today. That's like lesson one, yeah? Okay, so that's on. We just need to add some details on it here. Not that many, actually. Um, some fins, I think. That's about it. So let's get them added on to the sob. Uh, again, we're just on one frame, aren't we? So, uh, yeah, let's just stick these things on. Okay, just a quick catch-up. I've added on these things under here, the fins, or whatever they are. 
um, and also more fins on the back. Uh, the stand has been built as well. I mean, really, there's nothing to it. This is what, what, what a great starter model that is, okay? Um, now, to clean up this mess here, all you need to do is use a sandpaper stick and just uh, start off fine. And uh, really, honestly, it's as simple as that. It's gone. Thumb print gone. As easy as that. That's all there is to it. Uh, the other thing I did is added hatches on here instead of the periscope things. The detail's a bit um, soft, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you are more advanced, you're going to super detail these kits, yeah? And uh, we're not. This is our very, very first build. And I'll just show you how that goes. There's only a few little pieces to add. There's the conning tower sort of windscreen on there and some periscopy type things, whatever they are that go in those holes there. Then the bridge or the conning tower just slips on here like this and then push it forward so that these parts line up there and that's it. That's what, oh, oh gosh, oh, hold on. There we are, that's better. So actually I can cement this on and then I think the propellers as well add. I think I'll show you how we get them off. Let's, let's join this on. I may as well. Let's just get this all together so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, this is really a very suitable beginner's build because you're not going to get frustrated. There's very few parts. There's no masking. There's nothing tedious in it. And you can build it in basically. I think we've spent maybe, I don't know, maybe about an hour. I really think only about an hour to do this. Yeah. And there we are. There's a sob. Let's, uh, I'll show you how we get the um, screws out. Just be careful. That's all there is to it. There's nothing to it. We're going to glue these on straight away as well. We're not going to do anything separate. Let's just, just go for it. And I might show you a bit of filling and sanding, but I'm thinking, nah, don't. Just, uh, just live life, you know what I mean? Let's, let's just enjoy this. There's a bit of flash I need to tidy up here. Just notice that there. So I need to just go with my hobby knife here and just get rid of that there. And then I think the screws will go on. I think once we add some cement onto them. I said about dry fitting, I totally ignore my own rules. Okay, this needs a bit of hollowing out so you can put in your scalpel, just give it a twist round. So you need to do like that. Of course, we've got the same problem here. Now, let's see if this guy's going on. Yeah, that one does. This one's got a tiny, oops, a bit of flash there, I can just see it. So I need to go with my knife again. Check that. Yes, okay, that's it. So glue back on here. Screw attached. Attached. There we are, some rain. Kursk is basically complete. So that could be a very first build in one hour. Just add on those little details. We'll put them on. Hmm, last thing. I'll just show you how that looks like. And also I need to pull back for a wider shot. Oh, and there is one more small thing. You do get a little plaque as well. 
so I'll just take that out. And just keep a quick sound that that goes on. Make sure it isn't upside down. There we go. There is our coast plaque. Get rid of that. And put your boat on the stand. And there you are, your very first model. You may just leave it like this, to be honest. You may not even paint it as your very first model. At least you've done something, but we will paint it. With a couple of caveats okay so we'll come back to that part in a in a second okay so here we are the painting is completed with the rattle can it's flat black that's all there is to it uh, it's been given a day or two to cure uh, there's a little bit of detail painting to do. These are the um, instructions, the painting instructions. This part here is meant to be aluminium, which is that um, lower part of the bow. But we're not doing that. It's a first build. We're just doing one colour. Um, the decal markings differ to the sheet, but it was very easy to find out where they go. But this is optional step. These decals will go on to this um, flat paint. But if you use some gloss, prior to the decals they're going to lay down without silvering so that's what we're going to do we're just going to highlight the areas where we need to apply the decals that's the only place that we're going to apply the gloss varnish and that's all I think I've got it in the right place might be just there Remember all the details that I added on as well, these are just obviously just something that I did, they don't, uh, don't add them to your beginner build, that's just stuff that I've added and it's fictional as well, just cover up some, some seams. So we let that uh, gloss dry out and then we'll stick these stickers on and that should be, uh, should look a little bit different. Okay, let's just show you how quickly how we do the stickers, decals, decals, whatever we've probably got, slide transfers. They need to be applied into water, left to soak until they, they're basically um, inks on a film, on a paper backing, and they need to release themselves because they've got some, some, the, um, they need the water to get released from the backing film. So just leave it for a couple of minutes and once it's ready, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, once the decal's free and moving on the uh, paper, it's best to get a brush, dip it in the water and then go to the area where the decal gets applied to. And then just place it into position. You can see it doesn't exactly conform to the surface. Um, it's a little bit rigid. If you have any of this decal setting agent, just apply it on top and let it work. And then the decal should set. And I'll show you what it looks like after everything's dried out. Okay, here are the decals. All better down. So all that's done. This is going to need a flat coat on it now. Either out the can or airbrush or even brush on. So we'll just do that. So after we applied the flat coat, it's uh, yeah flat. Okay. Now you've got a choice here. Um, you can basically and we'll do it later on, stick on the bridge um, window, paint the props and it's done, or 
stick around and watch the next um, five, ten minutes and we do some weathering. And why not? If it's your first model, why not do some weathering? This is going to be really simple. Uh, stick around for that or jump ahead to the video and I'll show you what you need to do just to finish it off. Up to you. Okay, for weathering, we're going to use oil paints. In this case, we're using oil brushes from Ammo Meg. They're basically oil paints included within these rather handy and convenient containers. We need some uh, thinners. We're using turpentine in this case. We'll just add a little bit of that inside here. Need some brushes, of course. If you haven't got the uh, oil brushes, don't worry. You could use also normal tube oil paints which from your art store and just put them on a palette but the main thing is that these ones are just quick okay we're going for the quickest weathering job uh, we can achieve in terms of oil paints unusual sort of mix we've got a light flesh a dust and also this starship filth so two lights and a dark they're going to be applied in random dots so we're going to go straight into that uh, right away. Now, first of all, give these a bit of a shake, and we're just going to dust on or put on drops of this oil, and we'll just work in one section at a time. So, we'll just do this just to show you, or else uh, the video is going to be too long. But I intend this entire weathering process um, to be quick. You can see this actual light flesh is nearly a white, which is. Uh, pretty good because I did actually want to use white and we'll use this later on as well and then we'll put on a little bit we'll minimize the starship filth because uh, basically uh, this this the darker color isn't really what we want to do we want to create a layer of filth basically on top of the uh, the black and we're doing this, this isn't necessary, like I said, we're just doing this um, to add visual interest and uh, make the model more interesting. And even on the box art, we can see that there is some weathering effects. As you can see, Stipple we're creating a patina of colour. Don't worry about the intensity. This all will develop as we work our way through. The other thing to do is to have a rag or tissue or a towel. Um, if you have too much oils on the surface you can block them away. But as you can see by using this stippling method we can push the oils elsewhere and spread them about. We want a translucent coating of oils on the model. That's what we're aiming towards. So I'll be quiet for now, speed up the footage, and you can see what we end up with. Okay, so after that initial layer, we've got a very, very different look to this uh, submarine. Now it's obviously um, coated in this light mixture. Looks very different, does look weathered. All the monotony of the black coat is gone. Let's just add one other just effect. We can just add a little bit more intense streaking um, just on certain areas. So we're gonna use the um, oil brushes again. We're just gonna use this light flash color because it seemed to be quite effective. And we'll apply this again neat. And we're just gonna go in for dots this time. Uh, won't do every single one. There we go, a few more down here. So. Now instead of using the thinner, I'm just going to use a brush. We'll just start dragging these down.
Now we use a little bit of thinner just to tidy up a little bit. Use the same brush, get your rag, and we'll just tidy up a little bit. There you go, you get the idea. Salt stains, whatever they are. We'll add a few more of these and uh, that'll be the weather and it's finished. Just make sure you keep these vertical, straight down, or else they look weird. By varying the intensity as well, you get a more random appearance. If you're not, if it's over concentrated, just get your rag again and just pull them down. Like so. There you go, you get the idea. Let's continue with this. Okay, there we are. Streaking's done. That's the last of the weathering for this uh, particular model. I might, I don't know, I'm thinking about adding some uh, accent into these, um, whatever these are, these holes or whatever. There's no rust streaking at all. I think these are covered in rubber. Um, you know, because they've got this acoustic, um, uh, what do they call it, deadening properties. So, no rust streaks. Just the effects of salt, I think. Salty water is really what these streaks should represent. And uh, I quite like it. There's hardly anything to do now. Just need to do some details. And if you weren't, if you weren't into the weathering, we're just doing those stages now that finish off the model. So we'll get on with that now. Okay, let's paint the propellers. Um, it calls out gun metal, but what we've got is we've got, we're going to do it in two tones. We're going to do it in dark iron, Mr. Metal color, uh, brush painted. Um, I don't think modern propellers are bronze anymore. I don't even think they even look bronze. I think they use uh, more sophisticated alloys. So it says gun metal. We haven't got gun metal, so we're going to use. Uh, Use this. I have to be a bit careful. The oils are still drying, so I'll handle this using a cloth and uh, just quickly hand brush paint these propellers. Okay, what we'll do is we'll just uh, quickly highlight the. Um, Cursed lettering using dry brush technique. We'll use this chrome silver. Put some on your brush, and then you want to get it on a paper towel or a piece of paper to get dry, and then we'll just dry brush on the letters. metallic effect like so now as this metallic paint dries and if you keep on rubbing the brush over it the metallic effect becomes apparent. It's buffable paint. So we do that. You can see them getting brighter and brighter. I quite like this effect. I think it's enough for um, what we're doing. Simple model. Simple effects, looks okay. Okay, I think we've only got a glue on. We, uh, I've knocked off the uh, antennas about four or five times now on this build. And 
<laughs> I need to glue them back on. So there's also a learning curve, isn't there, with these builds. With submarines, glue on the periscope bits last, I think, is what I learned from this one. Anyways, uh, we've got the bridge to glue on, and then that's it. That's everything done. Okay, let's just round this up then. This is our very first build. I hope you enjoyed the experience. From here on, a number of things might happen. Anyways, the outlay of this kit was only $15. And how much time do we put into this? Well, I didn't measure it exactly, but I estimate it was about one hour to build. And then I did two hours of extra detailing. That was optional. When you first build, you're not likely to do that. Painting. Painting was 30 minutes using the spray can. And then from then on, you could be finished this entire project in four hours from start to finish, except you would split it over two days because you need time for the paint to cure. If you do the weathering, the weathering took about one and a half hours, two hours, and that was everything. So from this point on, you may think, no, I don't like modeling. I never want to buy another kit again. Or you develop an interest, in which case you might move on to the next kit. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this. And now we move back to our more uh, involved projects. So maybe a good start to build for people looking for information. Leave your comments, suggestions, and I'll come straight back to you.